Hello, hello everybody, it's your old pal Tuni here back with another video and today we are going to be talking all about pet portraits. First of all, hello, I'm an illustrator and comic artist hailing from Canada, but I also have been doing a lot of pet portraits this year and I they are some of my most favorite pieces that I've created and today I actually filmed the full process of this painting and I had intended to cut it into a longer vlog, but I was really happy with how the painting came out and I got a lot of positive feedback from people on social media so I thought let's just present this painting as a full video. Here it is, the painting in question. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much to the commissioner who commissioned this painting and I'm super excited to take you through the process so yeah, let's, let's just go ahead and get to the good stuff, shall we? Now I promise I am not hyperbolizing when I say that this is probably my favorite pet portrait that I have completed so far. And it's kind of funny to look back on because I have video evidence, um, I think it was from during Vlogmas where I did the first illustration in this style, it was a painting of Nori, and I said that that was my favorite painting that I had ever done, and now here I am, you know, a dozen or so pet portraits later and I still feel like I'm improving with with each painting that I do and some are more successful some are less successful but this one really worked for me and I think a big part of that was the reference image I was using had this extremely dramatic contrast between light and dark and I chose to interpret that in a much less contrasty way but using color instead to create the contrast rather than value but anyway um this is also the largest pet portrait that I've completed. This is on an 11 by 14 panel and I get a lot of questions about these panels that I use. People are like, oh, are you using canvas or are you using paper? No, these are uh, gessoed wood panels from a brand called Ampersand and I do imagine that I could probably buy blank panels and like prep them myself, but <laughs> I will I will spend the extra money. It's about like I think it's like eight to um, to twenty dollars a panel, uh, and I'm willing to spend that to have it prepped already for me to just go in with uh, my paints and for them to just work swimmingly on it. So yeah, if you're interested in trying out a new medium to paint on, definitely recommend the ampersand panels. They have a few different kinds, but the gesso board is the one that I've landed on as being my fave. The paint just just loves it. What can I say? To talk about technique for a minute, I'll just go over kind of my, how I layer the colors on. A lot of it is super intuitive. I do have my reference image directly in front of me. I am painting from it specifically. And people always ask like, how do you choose what colors to use when you're creating these fantastical palettes based on real life? And I think it's like, the first thing I have to say is that this is something I have been actively practicing for like the past year and a half is really improving my color palettes. Um, it started out by selecting uh, very limited palettes to use for certain illustrations. Something that I noticed that I'm drawn towards is stuff that is not overly complicated, stuff that is not overly detailed, and stuff that utilizes, you know, a five to six color palette in a really powerful way. So with my monthly sticker club, I decided that each of my sticker sheets would adhere to one of these color palettes. I thought it would make it fun for differentiating from month to month, theme to theme, but it also kind of created this like box for me to work inside of and sometimes giving yourself a box is actually for the best. So through using those limited palettes, you kind of learn how to substitute colors. So like, for example, if I don't want to use brown, but I'm drawing a brown cat, I'm like, okay, what will I choose to be brown in this um, image? And for a lot of, you know, it's a lot of like magentas and, and purples and stuff like that stuff that like translates from a value point of view or just that you can kind of trick the brain into being like, yeah, sure, that's brown. And in this one, luckily I was working with a orangey yellow cat, which is one of my favorite palettes to work with because I can still use yellow and intermix it with peach and pink and overall create a lot of depth of color on something where it's like, you don't wanna just take the yellow and then 
turn it down a few notches or like turn it down a few values and make like a shadow like that it's like no let's make the shadow pink let's adjust the hue a little bit just to kind of breathe a little bit more life into it and going back to the idea of creating like a language for your painting where brown is purple and yada yada you can do it in a lot of really creative ways i think that this one you can see obviously the dark purple shadow that was basically or light purple shadow i should say that was basically black in the reference image and i just decided like what will my darkest color be and then as long as you create these rules and you stay consistent with them through the painting you can really effectively like translate the regular human real life colors into basically whatever palette you want and this is the technique that I've been using for all of my semi-realistic gouache paintings. Like I've been doing some plein air stuff that has been really exciting for me as a painter because I'm drawing on sight and painting what I see with my eyes, but I'm having to make all these really creative decisions as to how to represent colors. Like I think that I've got some footage for the next vlog where like I'm actually using pink and orange for the color of the water because I was like looking at the water, noticing how much much it contrasted with all of the greens of the trees and being like well it, it is brown <laughs> but I don't want that's not how it feels to me it feels mu like much more of a focal point and so yeah I, I guess all I'm trying to say is if you trust in your instincts to kind of abstractify like the color palette just try it and see what works and see what doesn't and then you know if you don't like the way it turned out do it differently next time if you do like the way it turned out duplicate it next time so for example i've learned that i really like purples and shadows and so that's something that i've been relying on quite a bit um lately in my semi-realism paintings and yeah there's no rules honestly just just go for it remember your foundations and you can play pretty liberally on top of those. And if you're interested in getting into pet portraiture, I think having this sort of eye is really valuable because a lot of people are in this space. Pet portraits is not oversaturated because God knows there's a lot of pets and there's a lot of people who want portraits, but at the same time, you have to find a way to kind of stand out amongst the crowd. And incidentally, this is kind of where my art took me. Like I never set out to make these super saturated and pastel pet portraits it's just kind of where my style took me and i think that that's just based on the comments that i get from people that's what really draws people to my work um so if you do want to do this sort of thing like don't just copy me necessarily but like find a way to add you into the painting that you're doing um because i think that that's what's going to really draw people towards your work versus just anybody's pet portrait work. Something else to keep in mind if you're getting into pet portraits, and I didn't think of this really before I started taking them and then as I've been doing them through this year and working with clients, I realized that a lot of the time you are going to be dealing with um, people's pets who have passed and I think that like go into it realizing that this might be the case because obviously when you speak to clients you want to be very empathetic and you know I am running a business here but I'm also a gigantic cat lover and like thinking about like the cats that I've had in the past and how that's affected me when they've passed away like I put myself in the commissioner's shoes and on one hand it makes it like definitely more difficult to do the paintings because I know that I'm capturing something that this person will probably keep forever to remember their loved one that's gone. So if you do want to enter this space, just keep in mind that it is a little bit of an emotionally charged uh, sort of genre of work to create. And um, whenever I do a painting, I do try to ask, especially if I know that it is a, a pet that has um, passed on, I do try to ask to make sure it's okay that I film it and that I'm like sharing the process of it and that I am sharing the final product because I would never want to make someone who's investing quite a lot of money into getting this one-of-a-kind forever portrait uh, to feel uncomfortable or like I'm taking advantage of them or yeah so just that's just something to keep in mind that I've learned over having done these pet portraits for a while the last thing I want to mention is some people have been asking me about creating like 
prints of these and obviously it's super inappropriate to make prints of a commission if you haven't like discussed that with the commissioner obviously it's within your rights to do so generally but i think it's especially when we're talking about people's pets and people's pets who are no longer here um super like don't don't do that uh my opinion so i was thinking of creating some generic quote unquote cat portraits to make some prints of because i do have the one that i made of nori that i do sell at markets and people with tuxedos are like oh my god it's my cat or oh my god it's my sister's cat or it's my friend's cat and i do get a lot of sales for prints based on that so that's a really nice way to double dip on this particular skill set I'm, i am charging a lot for these and it's not accessible for everybody so it'd be nice to be able to give people something a little more accessible to try out so let me know in the comments what color palettes I should do for some pets in the future. I'm thinking of doing a black cat and a orange tabby to start with, but maybe a third one. So leave me a comment. Let me know what kind of cat, quote, generic cat you'd like to see. But yeah, that that's the end of this painting. Um, I do most of my paintings in the course of a day. This one was probably between five and six hours, but I, I don't remember exactly. And I, I love it, and I really hope the commissioner loves it too, and I am getting ready to send it off uh, this week. So <laughs> thanks for watching, and take it away, tuna whose face you can see. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. As I mentioned, please leave a comment with what kind of cat you would like to see in a more generic print style portrait. And also dogs, because I also have been painting dogs and they're just as much fun, if not more fun. Don't, don't tell the cats. Don't tell the cats that I said that. And yeah, I just want to hear what kind of pets should I paint? Maybe birds. I have never painted a bird, but I imagine that the feathers would be really fun, so. But you have made it to the end of this video and I want to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons who make this possible. Thank you so much for your ongoing support over there, whether it's $1, $10, $25 to get some cool stuff in the mail, every penny makes a huge difference. And if you did want to join this amazing group of people in my snack pack, I do all kinds of extra content over there like podcasts, sketchbook flip through videos, downloadable printable rewards, and whatever else I happen to have <laughs> time to do during the month. Their support makes YouTube possible for me, so give them a round of applause and maybe you can join those names in the future too, perhaps? Be sure to like the video, consider subscribing to the channel, and stay sparkly. Don't let the cruel world dull your shine. I will see you next time. Bah, 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 bah. Do you guys like my new dress? I think this is like my favorite dress that I have purchased recently. Um, I feel like an 80s supermodel, and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs>